Well, let's pull in another hole or two. It's a rainy day on Caddo Lake. We'll follow you. Here we go. And biologists are on the hunt. We're going back toward the state line right now, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to find it down there. What they're after is a small plant. We're looking for giant salvinia. One little plant with a big, bad reputation. There's a piece right yonder. That's it. Yeah, not very big yet. This one little thing here can expand into acres and acres and acres. That's why they call it the world's worst weed. Giant salvinia, hydrilla and water hyacinth, ligustrum and salt cedar. These invading plants are all exotic and grow out of balance with native plants. This is parrot feather. It's uh, native to South America. And uh, well, as you can see, once it gets in these bodies of water, it will completely take over. It's a very attractive plant visually, but in South America, it fits in with the natural ecosystem. Here, it does not. One salt cedar at a time. From West Texas desert to East Texas lakes, invasive plants are causing problems for native ecosystems. And biologists like Tim Bister are fighting back. It almost looks like you could walk across it, doesn't it? Caddo Lake is no stranger to invading exotic plants. This is hydrilla here, probably the most abundant invasive on the lake, right next to, to water hyacinth. But there is a new visitor from South America, giant salvinia. See that plant right there? It has everyone concerned. Looks like it. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, show sure is. We kind of figured it was going to eventually get here, and it did. Chances are, giant salvinia came to Caddo by boat trailer. What do you think about that? And was first brought to the States by someone who just thought it was pretty. Tough getting in there. But a pretty plant, away from natural predators, can quickly become a pretty big problem. Doing our best to keep it out of the Texas side of Caddo Lake. Salvinia is the latest one, and it's by far the worst. I think everybody that lives on the lake should take up a very big interest in it. North Shore is where we've... For lake communities, have been the stakes are very high. I have two tourism-based businesses on this lake. The local economy here revolves around fishing, boating, and tourism, all of which are threatened by giant salvinia. This was one of the first areas that it came to. On the Louisiana side of Caddo Lake, the invasion is underway. It looks like all this brown area, the state of Louisiana, might have been out here doing some herbicide spraying, which is good. It just grows so fast, and to be on top of it all the time, it's just, uh, it's an uphill battle. It's been described as the worst aquatic plant in the world. It doubles in size in a week. Uh, it blocks out the sunshine. It takes oxygen out of the water. All, everything just is gone. It's the only thing that survives, and it's, it's a type of thing that can just completely kill a lake like Caddo. The water's a little higher than last time. It was trying to come back. We'll go see what's in there. Ken Shaw and Jack Kansen are also determined to save this lake. Can you nose that way a little, Kenny? Yeah, it looks like the it. The smallest piece of this plant can start a whole new colony. That's giant salvinia. So to keep floating salvinia in Louisiana from creating new problems in Texas, a local coalition is trying something bold. The western half of the lake right now is not infected, and we want to keep it that way. This group is building a fence across Caddo Lake. We're running two miles of rope, two miles of netting, and we're installing over 500 posts. I guess you could call it a major experiment. There are no 100% guarantees with it, but on the other hand, we don't see that we have a choice. The barricade should slow the plant's advance, but only time will tell. We're prepared to fail here and there, but we're not prepared to lose the war against Giant Salvinia because we didn't try something. It's a nasty problem killing life in the water. Tonight, NBC's Don Teague tells us about one community that's refusing to go down without a fight. You're looking at an act of desperation. NBC Nightly News came down and did a story on it. This is because of this fence. It spreads from lake to lake by boat trailers and has now infested more than 50 lakes from Virginia to California. And for now, the future of Caddo Lake 
hangs on two miles of orange netting. After weathering one growing season, the Salvinia barrier seems to have helped. Without all the efforts that have gone on this year on Cattle Lake, it could be a lot worse. Definitely opens eyes when somebody comes out here to the lake and sees this big orange fence, getting the public aware. We should constantly be on the lookout. Education goes hand in hand with prevention. It makes people realize this is a serious problem. Otherwise, no one would let those fools build that fence across this lake. And we feel like we are stopping uh, uh, some major infestations from happening. Unfortunately, a good year of fighting one invasive does not mean success with them all. It's ironic in some ways that we're also having the worst year for water hyacinth in um, anyone down here's memory. By late 2007, thousands of acres of Caddo are covered. The water hyacinth really has taken off this year. It's bad news for biodiversity, bad for boaters, and for their motors. With some herbicide treatments, you can keep these boat roads open. With a lot of the effort going towards giant salvinia, it's taken away some efforts from water hyacinth. It's a manpower issue, and it's also a money issue. You know, herbicides aren't cheap, but you also have to have the, the staff to, to apply it. Aquatic herbicides may be preferable to invasive plants, but chemicals are just one option. We would rather not use herbicides if we can help it. This is alligator weed. In the summertime, it will increase to a point where you could not move a boat through it. To combat invasive alligator weed, biologists enlist a tiny army. Those are alligator weed flea beetles. We are actually introducing insects that are the natural predators. They're ready to go. And we want to employ them as much as possible. That green spot right there looks like the best. The danger, of course, is uh, you're introducing an exotic to control an exotic. But these bugs are not released without extensive testing. They have been approved by the USDA as biocontrol agents. Perfect. We can be reasonably confident that they're not going to impact the environment or the ecology where they're placed. We can come back and check them. OK, good. See how they're doing. We've come a long way in biocontrol efforts. We don't expect them to eradicate the plant but we do expect them to reduce it. And other biocontrols are being developed. See these scars on the leaf doing a little bit for us. Even for the worst invaders. With giant salvinia, I am very optimistic. Right there. We've seen really good results with the weevil. At an Army Corps of Engineers lab north of Dallas, biologists are studying a tiny weevil that may help keep giant salvinia in check. In a lot of areas where it has been released, it has gone in there and it's done an excellent job of controlling. And eventually they decimate the giant salvinia. Look at the damage. Yep. You never eradicate it, but I think it gives us a management tool. They are just feeding like crazy. But the best tool to manage invasive plants may simply be education. One of the most important things is public awareness and public involvement. We assume that many of these plants made it into the United States through the aquarium trade or perhaps the water garden trade. Check your boat trailers, check, check your boats, you know, so that you don't spread this somewhere else. While the struggle against invasive plants continues for the folks at Caddo Lake, their dedication also endures. We're very fortunate up here at Caddo Lake to have these people that, that care about the lake. Caddo is that important. It's more important than any of the rest of us. All of the entities that have anything to do with Caddo Lake they understand this is a fight we can't lose. We've got to all pull together, and we're doing it.